paints, we've looked at what we're going to use to paint and now let's have a look at the surfaces that we're going to actually paint on. And the first one that everybody thinks with oils and acrylics and probably the best surface to paint on is what's called a stretch canvas. You can hear that's just bouncing your fingers on that makes you want to paint doesn't it? Just feeling that bounce of the canvas. Now this is actually a thicker frame than you would normally get. You can see if I hold that up to the camera that's about an inch, inch and a quarter deep. Normally it's only perhaps about half that thickness uh, but it doesn't really matter. The stretch canvas is the pinnacle of painting acrylics and oils uh, because you really feel the first time you start painting on a stretch canvas that you're actually a proper painter somehow and it, it, it's a, a great thrill. There's many other painting surfaces that you can use that are just as good or, or nearly as good and which are far more economical. The first one we're looking at here is a canvas panel. Now again this is exactly the same canvas that we just looked at on the, uh, on the stretch canvas except this time it's stretched over on a piece of thick cardboard and it's quite flexible but not as flexible as the stretch canvas but you still get the lovely texture and I've done an awful lot of paintings on this sort of surface and they're absolutely great and in fact I've sold many pictures painting on this sort of uh, surface. It comes pre-primed, remember we mentioned about the acrylic gesso about being painted over the surface to seal it and to give you a nice surface to paint on. Well these canvas boards and most of the pre-stretched canvases that you buy are already pre-primed with one, two or sometimes three coats of gesso uh, in the factory so you don't have to worry about them. Having said that, let's just look at this piece of uh, mount card and I've painted a coat of gesso on both sides. That's simply to stop it warping. If you paint it on one side then it's going to warp and it's not going to be easy to paint on. Paint it on both sides and it straightens the warp out and flattens out again. But on this you can see I've put a very rough and very thin coat of raw sienna, uh, sorry of yellow ochre or you can use raw sienna if you like, uh, just to take the stark whiteness off the surface. You can see the difference. I've left this part here which is white and I've painted all over the rest of the surface. Now that's great when you come to paint the real advantage of having that uh, yellow ochre colour or if you wanted to create a different sort of sombre mood you could put a pale blue or even a pale brown or pale grey but as long as you put some sort of pastel tint on the paint surface it loses all that harsh whiteness so it's not as forbidding when you first come to paint on it and secondly it also means that any little bits of the canvas or the painting surface that you happen to miss isn't going to jump out at you as a piece of missed uh, surface because it's bright white. It's going to be dulled down with the colour, the underpainting if you like, that you've put on. So that's just a little, it's not a dodge, it's, it's, it's a matter of practice that I, I think most artists, certainly professional artists, will always do before they start the main painting. That's, there's another piece of mount card, there's the cream side and there is the white gesso. So there we have two pieces of mount card that are ideal for producing acrylic paintings. Now another surface that's often overlooked which is equally good is watercolour paper and you can see the texture of watercolour paper quite clearly. Now the beauty of this particular piece of paper is that it's uh, pre-tinted a yellowy creamy colour in the factory but there's no reason why if you have a white piece of watercolour paper you can't put that thin wash of um, yellow ochre or whichever colour you choose over the paper you can put also a thin wash of the gesso if you want to seal it and uh, there we have it. It's another great surface. It's quite thick and quite sturdy and great for painting acrylics on. Here we've got an acrylic paint pad. You can see that this is a sort of uh, about a watercolour thickness paper. It's about, uh, what are we, uh, what does it say? It's 140 pounds or 300 grams. 
the thickness of the paper. So it's the same thickness as watercolour, but this time you can see that it's got this canvas-like surface embossed into the paper. So again, it gives you uh, a great feel for painting acrylics. And even if you only use it for practice, it's excellent to work on. And if you're careful about it, you could probably even do a full painting on that sort of surface. You can see you've got probably about 20, 25 sheets of this stuff. So plenty of opportunities for practice. Right now, of course, wood panels of various sorts are an ideal and relatively cheap means of uh, creating a painting surface for acrylic paints. Here we've got, for example, chipboard, nice solid piece of chipboard. You can use both sides, no problem. Here's a piece of uh, what we in the UK call hardboard. I think it's called masonite more frequently in the States where you have a smooth surface and a rough surface. MDF you can obtain in various thicknesses. It's very, very similar to this. And if you want to, you can use plywood, such as this drawing board is made from. All you need to remember with each of these surfaces is to make sure that you prime them first with the gesso, as I've already explained. If you can't get hold of gesso or it's uh, too expensive, then matte vinyl household paint, white or some pale color painted over is a very good substitute. And finally, we have this sort of surface. You can see, I'm not going to undo it because it'll be all over the place, but this is lining paper that you buy to cover uh, imperfections in walls and just to smooth out uh, dints and bumps and hollows. And I use this all the time if I'm doing any sort of uh, demonstration in our classes, because it's, first of all, very economical. But this is easily available from do-it-yourself stores. If you can't get hold of lining paper and it's available in various thicknesses, it starts off at what they call about 800 grade. Uh, you can get a thousand grade. This I think is uh, from memory is a 1200 grade. But if you can't get hold of lining paper like this, and obviously you can paint on both sides of it, then an ordinary uh, roll of wallpaper, spare wallpaper, is gonna be just as effective. Now, with this, the 1200 grade, you can see it's pretty sturdy stuff, but it's also pretty flexible as well. And I use this all the time in painting demonstrations as a convenient means of demonstrating watercolors and acrylic painting. I keep it on the roll because I can refer back to previous paintings I've done if necessary. But if you want to, you can simply cut a sheet off to size, stick it to your drawing board and paint there. Or you could put the drawing board on the easel and paint on the easel if you're more comfortable doing that. So there we are. That's just a brief overview of the various painting surfaces. But again, acrylics gives you the opportunity to have a look around and paint on all sorts of surfaces. And I hope this brief overview has given you a few ideas and the inspiration to realise that really painting in acrylics gives you all sorts of opportunities and all sorts of surfaces that you can paint on.